Hello, welcome to Best of the Best, playing with power series where we rate the top cards, decks, sets, and much more from a CEDH perspective. Today's episode is about the top 10 spookiest cards for CEDH. These are cards that have a Halloween or otherwise spooky theme and commonly see play in CEDH decks. We're just having some fun today. It's Halloween. If you're looking to buy any of the scary cards mentioned today, be sure to check out our list in the description. Also, if you like this video and want to help out, give us a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already subscribed. Finally, if you want to see more like this and want to be part of an amazing community, consider signing up to our Patreon. We have all kinds of offerings at multiple levels and you'll get awesome benefits for your direct support. A link is in the description below and we hope to talk to you on our Patreon only Discord. Thanks! Now, let's dive into our list. Number 10 on our list is Razakath the Foulblooded. This card is 5 and 3 black for an 8-8 legendary demon. It has flying and trample and reads, pay 2 life, sacrifice another creature. Search your library for a card and put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. Razakath is one of the strongest demons Liliana Vest made a pact with. He was located on Amonkhet, where he guarded the gate to the afterlife for Nicobolus. Razakath is commonly used as a reanimation target to combo off through the use of its manaless tutoring ability. You sacrifice creatures and tutor up your win con after this demon has been reanimated. After you reanimate Razakath, you can win the game starting with as little as 0 mana and 2 creatures. Very powerful. Number 9 on our list is Drown in the Lock. This card is blue-black for an instant that reads, Choose one. Counter target spell with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard, or destroy target creature with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard. The concept and the art of this card are both very haunting. We infer first that Drowning in the Lock might mean something of an unfortunate accident. That is, until we see the art depicted on the card and realize the name on this card actually means something much more sinister. This card sees CDH play because of the versatility on the card itself. It is not common that we see empty graveyards in CDH. Also, the average CMC of the spells we cast in CDH is very low. That means it doesn't take much for this card's effects to turn on and be a very versatile card in our hands. Number 8 on our list is Blood Moon. This card is 2 in a red for an enchantment that reads, Non-basic lands are mountains. The claim of a Blood Moon is a sign of the beginning of the end times originating in the biblical book of Joel where it is written, the sun will turn into darkness and the moon into blood. Blood Moon is a very powerful effect in CDH because of the prevalence of multiple colors in our format. CEDH is riddled with greedy mana bases due to things like 5 color commanders and the common use of Tainted Pact, meaning every card in your library has to have a unique name. Blood Moon harshly punishes these types of decks, making their lands mountains before they ever have a chance to interact with it. Also, if you ever want to strike fear into a magic judge, tell them you have a judge question about Blood Moon. Number 7 on our list is Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth. This card is a legendary land that reads, Each land is a swamp in addition to its other land types. Urborg is a large tropical and particularly marshy isle on one of the more prominent of the burning isles of Dominaria. It is known for being one of the regions with the most concentrated amounts of black mana. Yawgmoth, also known as the Ineffable to his servants and referred to as the Lord of the Wastes throughout Dominarian mythology, was the medical genius of the Thran Empire who was banished for his highly controversial solutions to medical ailments. His demise came about during the Phyrexian invasion of Dominaria, when the sentient light that emitted from the legacy weapon finally brought him to an end. Or did it? Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth is a great land that helps fix your mana in a very easy way by simply making all land swamps on top of already what they are. So your islands become underground seas and so on. It can also help enable the lands that don't normally tap for mana become useful as well. This includes cards like the Tabernacle of Pendrel Vale and Bazaar of Baghdad. Number 
Number six on our list is Animate Dead. This card is one and a black for an aura, which is a creature enchantment, that reads, here we go. Enchant creature card in a graveyard. When Animate Dead enters the battlefield, if it's on the battlefield, it loses Enchant Creature card in a graveyard and gains Enchant Creature put onto the battlefield with Animate Dead. Return Enchanted Creature card to the battlefield under your control and attach Animate Dead to it. When Animate Dead leaves the battlefield, that creature's controller sacrifices it. And Enchanted Creature gets minus one minus zero. The idea of summoning a creature from the grave to do your bidding is sinister indeed. The art depicted on this card throughout its history has always been that of summoning something macabre directly from the ground, bursting forth with an undead energy about it. This card goes back all the way to the beginning, starting off in Alpha. As you can see, it was hard to get the wording right then as well. A fun fact about this card was the schoolyard arguments that this card always created. The original printing of the card read, Enchant Dead Creature. So, whenever you would discard a creature card or mill it from your library, there was always the inevitable arguments that the creature that you're trying to summon was never on the battlefield and therefore wasn't alive to begin with. The concept of reanimating a very powerful creature from your graveyard for only two is an extremely powerful effect in CDH and just magic in general. This card is commonly used to reanimate big creatures such as Consecrated Sphinx, Jinja Taxus, Kor Augur, or even the aforementioned Razaketh the Foulblooded. This card can even be used as a win con by using it in things like Leonin Relic Warder Loops to get infinite death triggers to kill the table. We are halfway there, and number 5 on our list shares a very similar flavor to number 6, and this card is called Reanimate. This card is one black for a sorcery that reads, Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. You lose life equal to its converted mana cost. The concept and impact of this card is very heavy. You will bring something back from the dead, but it requires something more. It requires some of you. You have to give up some of your life force in order to bring this life into being. That idea is indeed powerful from a conceptual and a mechanical standpoint. This card does essentially the same thing as Animate Dead, except it doesn't require an enchantment to do so. It is cheaper than Animate Dead and allows you to bring out big creatures very early in the game. Paying life instead of mana has always been a powerful effect, and this card shows just how powerful it can be. Number 4 on our list is Necropotence. This card is three black for an enchantment that reads, skip your draw step. Whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard. Pay one life, exile the top card of your library face down. Put that card into your hand at the beginning of your next end step. Necro is the Greek prefix meaning death. Potence means power, strength, and potency. Necropotence is the personification of your power to leverage your own life for an advantage against your adversaries. This card really doesn't need much introduction. This card is powerful enough to be banded legacy and restricted in vintage. The raw card draw you get from using your high life total in CDH is why this card is so powerful. For reference, the card Yogmoth's Bargain is banned in EDH. Number three on our list is Dark Ritual. This card is one black for an instant that reads, add three black. This card, debuting all the way back in Alpha, has quite a history. It was one of the original Alpha boons. It was a cycle of cards that gave a three for one. You've heard of many of these cards. Lightning Bolt, Giant Growth, Ancestral Recall, Dark Ritual, and Healing Self? The concept of a ritual, which is a spell that produces mana, got its name from this card. This card has seen 34 printings in paper and online since its inception. Every art depicted on this card has always shown something ominous and dark. Interestingly enough, it has also seen multiple iterations of its card type throughout history as well. It started as an interrupt, then became a mana source, and then finally settled on an instant as it's seen today. Dark Ritual is a commonly used card in Ad Nauseam strategies and Storm strategies in CEDH. Putting out an early Ad Nause through the use of Dark Ritual leads to very early wins. Also, 
going mana positive after an explosive ad nauseum resolution is key to winning from these types of decks, and Dark Ritual fits the slot perfectly. Also, cranking out a turn one Necropotence with Dark Ritual has always been a fan favorite. Number two on our list is Vampiric Tutor. This card is one black for an instant, that reads, search your library for a card, then shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. You lose two life. One of the most powerful tutors in the game, this card saw its debut in Visions back in 1996. The idea and the flavor of this card has always been on point. You'll get what you desire, but it'll cost you. In this case, the vampire over your tutelage has required a bit of quid pro quo for his knowledge. Vampiric Tutor is seen in every CDH deck running black. The ability to get the card you want at such a low cost and so early in the game makes this one of the most popular cards in CEDH. Finally, number one on our list is Demonic Tutor. This card is one in a black for a sorcery that reads, search your library for a card, put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. This card has quite the history attached to it. It saw its first printing back in Alpha. Its illustrator, Douglas Schuler, was the original artist. Interestingly enough, his name was misprinted on the card, a mistake that would not be corrected until revised. When Magic the Gathering started to gain traction in the mid-90s, many concerned parents and conservative religious groups started to notice the demonic depictions on the art on the cards. They would see pentagrams in the art and see that you're consulting with and summoning demons, and that led to some controversy in the public eye. This outcry from these groups led wizards to respond by censoring some of these controversial items. While Unholy Strength has always been the centerpiece of this censorship, with the pentagram behind the character being removed from revised edition to fourth edition, Demonic Tutor actually got a bit of censorship as well. Summer Magic, the revised edition set that was printed in summer 1994, in response to production issues and growing concern of satanic images on some of the cards, actually saw Demonic Tutor get censored. The pentagram on the demon's forehead in Demonic Tutor was removed in Summer Magic. This card is banned in Legacy and restricted in Vintage. Interestingly enough, it was banned before the concept of formats had even existed. It was banned from Tournament Magic on March 23rd, 1994. Vintage and Standard, then called Type 1 and Type 2 respectively, wouldn't be introduced until 1995. Well, there you have it. Our picks for the top 10 spookiest and scariest cards for CEDH. We wanted to thank the curators of the MTG Wiki for help in creating this video. You can find links in the description below. If you want to help us out, please like this video and consider subscribing if you haven't already subscribed. If you are looking to pick up any of these spooky cards for your CEDH decks, there is a TCG Player link in the description. When you purchase on TCG Player through that link, you help this channel grow, so thank you. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.